For now, Lord, we ask that you bless this food we take for the nourishments of our bodies. Bless the hands that prepared this food. Bless each and every one within the sound of my voice. We ask all this in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us say, Amen. Amen. Okay, okay. I'm going to get my stuff over here. I'll come over here. You're all enjoy. then now turning over these such cases to the state attorney general make a difference at all? Or it's kind of like eh, another form of excuse or another form of delay? <laughs> Okay, good evening everyone. I hope you're enjoying the chair's reception. Uh, I am. We are now uh, want to um, continue here. We are very pleased tonight to thank Panasonic for actually sponsoring the chair's reception. We're happy that they were able to. It's difficult to clap and, and use your fork at the same time, but let's just try it one more time. Let's thank Panasonic. And tonight we're celebrating the arts and the media. First, we want to recognize the Newark Museum, founded in 1909 as an institution of art, science, industry, by famed museumologist John Cotton Dana. The Newark Museum is the New Jersey's largest museum and one of the most influential museums in the United States. Beginning together, art and science, the museum allows an educational and inspirational journey through 80 galleries of world-class collections, including American, Asian, African, and classic arts. The executive director and chief executive officer is Mr. Stephen King. Let's give a round of applause for all the wonderful work that the Newark Museum brings us around the years. Thank you very much for them. Next, we need to recognize positive community, which reflects the very best in our communities. We focus on the family and the community building efforts the good work of churches, businesses, institutions, and individuals. It is clear from research and experiences that what is seen, heard, or read in churches has the highest retention level. The positive community delivers quality and service. Tonight, we need to thank Adrian Council, the publisher, 
and Jean Maswell, the editor and chief. Give them a round of applause while they come up and, and say a few words. Thank you. Published its first edition in September 2011 and is now available at selected retail locations including CVS, ShopRite, Wawa, and Wawa stores throughout South Jersey. We're very proud to have Mr. Al Thomas here this evening. Please come forward. Thank you. Well, we're very honored to uh, be a part of the program this evening. But I just want to share something with you at the South Jersey Journal. Everybody received a copy of our paper earlier today at the luncheon. Uh, the South Jersey Journal has been in business for five years. Our readership is 68,000. We're in every county in southern New Jersey, except Cape May County. Uh, we serve, um, serve 62 municipalities. And we're really a grown newspaper influence. Uh, you can pick up our newspaper at Wawa, ShopRites, public and county libraries, colleges, churches, doctor offices, and also hospitals. And South, and South Jersey is a very grown market for uh, African Americans. We're an African American publication, but yet we reach a lot of non-African Americans in our footprint. 
So what we're planning to do, hopefully moving in 217, is to come uh, bi-monthly. And lastly, I'm a product of the black press. I used to work at the Philadelphia Tribune newspaper for 20 years. I was director of marketing and advertising. And I had an opportunity to learn a lot from my mentor here, Claude Allen, who I've known for about 33 years. So black media is, is needed in our community. We're also a member of a trade organization called the National Newspaper Publishers Association. And I would like our fellow publishers at this club to maybe become a member of our trade organization. There are 206 African American newspapers across the country. Again, thank you very much. Thank you very much for everyone who came out tonight. I hope you enjoyed the orders and the food that's provided. Panasonic did a nice job, we'll let them know. And we want you to look forward to meeting us in a little bit over to the Robert Street Hotel in the Crystal Room. Uh, we'll have uh, some drinks. John, is it permissible to have drinks later tonight? Cash bar, 8.30 to 10.30. We look forward to seeing all of you there. Please help yourselves to some more food. Thank you to Rutgers, thank you to the servers, thank you to the kitchen and everyone. And I'm gonna ask Reverend Tuff to give us a benediction, but you'll be welcome to stay for a little while longer and enjoy yourself this evening. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious and merciful Father, Lord God, we come very humbly first to say thank you. Lord God, we ask you to bless with the eyes and ears have heard. Bless each and every one within the sound of my voice. Bless New Jersey big. Lord God, we bless our boy. Continue to give us the wisdom. Continue to give us the strength. We ask all of this in your son, Jesus Christ. Let us say amen. Amen. Centered, huh? Somebody's shoulder. Look through somebody's shoulder. Come on, and you're in the back. Okay, we have one problem. John, come on. There's one problem. We're by the door frame. We don't want that in there. So, can everybody just move a little bit? Go this way. You want to tighten up? Can you just stay that way for a minute because there's a different photographer going to step forward. One. Two. Three. Four. All right, come on now. You ready? I'm good. One more, one more, one more, one more. I just want to make one change. Can you come over? Side, please. Uh -oh. On this side. So why do I have it? Everybody looks great. Here we go. Right. There's no line. No, it's no line. You cannot stand. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, it's those three over there. No, no, I know you. I'm John Smith. I'm the one that put you in touch with Clyde oh Allen. My yeah, right. Yeah. About those we, eyes. yeah, with Janet. Yeah, with Janet. Uh, yeah, Janet. Uh, well, I want to talk to you more extensively, yeah. and I'd like to get you on mic. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do these three people. Okay, that I'm great. I need to talk to you. So where okay. would you like to be standing? Name. Uh huh. The company or organization that you represent, and uh -huh. what you think about the convention this year. Okay, and I just need you to talk for less than two minutes. That's oh, it, just comment. Right. Oh, your name, organization, and what you thought of the convention. Gone. Tell me, you got to tell me when. And on three. Myra Campbell, former mayor of the city of Asbury Park. There wasn't a dull moment to any of the conferences today. It was excellent. 
Uh, my name is Wendy Adi Darko, and I'm an educator. And this conference was very powerful, very informative, and uh, very encouraging. It just reminded me that there's so much work that needs to be done with our com within our community, but we have so many resources to accomplish this amazing goal. My name is Mirta Nicholas from Hudson County Office on Aging. And I think the conference is one of the best. I really enjoy every moment of it, especially the morning session as well as this afternoon. It was amazing. Thank you. No, no smile, huh? <laughs> all right. Can I bother you a minute for comments about the conference? I was told you were here all day. Uh, I was here in the morning. I had to step out for the afternoon. Okay, and you? And I'm just here for the reception. Okay, so can you talk on those two, the morning session? Could you just say the morning session was whatever? So I need your name and the organization that you my name is Deborah Cornovaca. I'm here from the New Jersey Education Association. I had the privilege of being here this morning for the NJ BIC conference. And I have to tell you, it was phenomenal. Mayor Baraka lit up the house, brought so much truth to power, and really made us think about why it's so important that we talk about black issues in New Jersey. I attended the voting rights uh, session in the morning, the workshop with Senators Torricelli and Rice, and they were phenomenal. Ryan Haygood spoke so much about the need for us to not only to work through the legislature, to improve voting access, but to organize in our communities to make sure people are voting and pressure legislators to do the right thing. It's been great. Um, I'm just here with Deb. Oh, you're just so, with her. Yes. Okay, all right. Just, just her. <laughs> session, but I do know Clyde Allen yes. and the, the good people that put this on. Oh, well, Harris. tell us about the black issues in the past yeah, and well, the history that you have on what it. What we're happy about is that black issues has come to Newark. That's very important. And um, so we're just here to celebrate positive community. This is good news that we are just, we're, 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 it's important that we share this. Not only with the community of the greater Newark area, but also our publication reaches deep into, uh, into the New York City market as well. Actually, we actually print more issues for New York City than we do in New Jersey. So we have a very large presence there, but what we're doing is, is we're sharing all of the good news that's coming out of New Jersey um, to the New York market. So and this- And vice versa. Right, and vice versa. It goes both ways. Thank you. What would you say were some of the toughest issues that you handled in the year 2016? Wow. The toughest issues we handled in 2013, 2016 uh, in regard to publishing the magazine is getting uh, the corporate advertiser to understand the value of the black consumer market and that uh, the negative is not what we want to see or hear all of the time. So they're, they, uh, their ad in a positive vehicle would do very well for them. The issues that we there really aren't any tough issues for us to cover because everything that we do is good and great and better and more. And so, um, you know, it's an easy, a very easy thing to do every month uh, to figure out what, it's, there's an overabundance of material, actually. I think we, and I think we need to be, all need to be reminded that the universe is inherently positive. The negative stuff is yeah. just for here and now, but ultimately, Reverend, you will say that the universe is inherently positive, so it's easy for us Very to easy. report the positive news. But it, like she said, the difficulty is is that a lot of the negative media, uh, uh, a lot of the negative media outlets are being supported by the corporations that we support. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, what's we, popular instead of what's positive. Right. <laughs> what's popular instead of what's positive. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, when it comes down to Black Lives Matter. Mm hmm. That's a tough subject because they seem to think that their actions are justified and then we have the public that are going the other way with it. How do you present that, uh, do, how do you remain uh, objective in presenting that? Because we can, we can, our goal is to uplift so that we want people to know that there's no way you can condone police brutality just as there's no way that you can condone uh, these murderous uh, occurrences in our community committed by black, mostly by black men. So we don't condone that, but what we try to do is offer another vision 
of who we are and who we can grow into becoming. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that the important thing indeed with that is that we as a community and we as an ethnic group, African American people, there's two things that we have to focus on that, that we must value above everything else. The progress of our children and the integrity of our culture. Mm -hmm. Those are the two most important things, and you go to, Reverend, you go to any other community, mm -hmm. those are the two things you do not mess with. Mm -hmm. But with us, we have to grasp, because that's the gift that comes from God to our collective. And if once we grasp that, you know, we can move forward. And so that's what Gene and I have been doing now for the past 17 years. And we're just so happy to have in our network about 161 churches that receive this magazine once a month. So it's a, it's it is as Jean says it is an our honor to serve. Again mm -hmm. Wells and I am the editor of the Positive Community Magazine. My name is Adrian uh, A Council Senior. Um, and uh, Jean and I are co-founders of the Positive Community Magazine. I'm the publisher. Reverend Ronald Tuff, second vice chair of the New Jersey Black Issues Convention. John Smith, treasurer, New Jersey Black Issues Convention, and this is my 33rd Black Issues Convention. All right. Hold it. We have questions for you. At the Black Issues... We're here at the Black Issues Convention with two board members, Reverend Ronald Tuff and Treasurer John Smith. Question, how long have we been doing this together? For me, it's been 33 years. Um, I came to, I first, I was not a board member uh, 33 years ago. I've been a board member for approximately 20 years. I was asked by the one of the founding principals uh, at the time, Councilman Donald Tucker, who uh, later became New Jersey Assemblyman Donald Tucker, representing the 28th Legislative District. Uh, he asked me, uh, at the time I was a Newark police officer, a Newark uh, police investigator, and he needed some representation from uh, the black police in, in the city of Newark, so he asked me to uh, be that representative. and. Uh, that's 20 years ago. I'm sure you found this very challenging. What are the issues that are being presented here in workshop this year? We, we cover everything from economics to social justice to criminal justice. Uh, we try to be a well-rounded uh, uh, convention where uh, we not only identify problems, we try to offer some solutions to problems and, and that's that's most important to us to not only identify but to offer some solutions to uh, uh, eradicate those those problems. Reverend Tuff, could you tell us who your guest speaker was for the day? Uh, it, it, well, in my work, I, I did the uh, f uh, workshop for faith-based leaders. And I had uh, Reverend Darrell Armstrong, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church in Trenton. I had Reverend Randy Laster, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Patterson. Reverend Harper, uh, founder of uh, Green Faith, executive director. And I had Darrell Scipio, who was the uh, union organizer for 32BJ. And we covered a host of issues. Uh, one, we uh, covered environmental issues as it affects our community. We also covered uh, uh, violence in the community. And we also covered new ways for churches to deal with problems in the community today. Wow. Now, this uh, uh, convention, how many people does this uh, draw to your invention on an annual, an average? Almost uh, a little over between maybe between 700 to 1,000 people come and go over the, uh, uh, over, the two, over the two or three days. And how much planning actually goes into the event? <laughs> the planning <laughs> you, uh, the planning process starts right after the convention ends. So it's almost a year planning the convention. Thank you. And now we also have with us Janet McDaniel. I believe you're a board member also. Yes. <laughs> Could you tell me, uh, being a new member, what has been your experience? 
Okay, well, I'm a new member to the board, but I've been involved with BIC since Donald Tucker started it. Mm -hmm. So I probably over the last 34 years mm -hmm. have only missed maybe one or two uh, BIC conferences. Uh, in addition to that, I know these gentlemen and I know most of the people who are involved with BIC. But also, you know, at the grassroots in Patterson, we have something called New Family Foundation. And I start, we started that um, many years ago. But some of the principles and concepts were derived from Walter F F Leroy's, from, yes. um, Walter the Black w Family Walter Plan. Leroy from Washington, D.C. Yeah. From the Black Family Plan, which is part of what we have even in this conference today. So I've been involved all along. How important do you think discussing the black issues are to the uh, black communities around Passaic County and Bergen? Well, they are essential to our well-being, but what we have to do is find a way to reach the person on the corner. Right now, we have a lot of um, elected officials, a lot of educators, a lot of uh, uh, people who are in high positions in terms of their field, and we need that. But we also need to be able to try to reach out to that little person on the corner so that we can uplift the entire community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to come. Yes, babe. You need me? You called me also for me. Yes, I did. <laughs> I don't. I, I try to get people to bring up what they remember. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I remember you. Okay. Your name, sir? My name is Roy Breckenridge, and I am the correspondent for Anointed News Journal. And Anointed News Journal is uh, over 22 years been in publication out of Camden, New Jersey. And what we try to do is get the good news out to people uh, within the southern Jersey area, but we're expanding now to North Jersey. That's why we're here today to talk about uh, a number of the issues that Black Issues has been covering uh, for over 30 years. Mm. Well, uh, what are some of the issues that you're having down in Camden? We're really interested in that because we see it played out in the news. Mm -hmm. We're trying to understand, is it going forward or is it falling off more? Well, you know, uh, Camden is pretty much like any major metropolitan city. Um, uh, it's not as large as Newark, but some of the same, uh, I say, complexities that happen are uh, people from, let's say, Philadelphia filter over into Camden, New Jersey. And uh, Camden has not been able to uh, shelter all the people that the overflow has been coming from Philadelphia. So they're now restructuring from the police department, uh, like Newark, to the education department. But more than that, there's money being put into the city to redevelop it. Very good, very good. Um, we know that uh, the city was um, taken over by the, by the uh, governor uh, as far as the police. Uh, are you seeing better protection provided to the community uh, now that the uh, governor has formed that special task force? Well, you know, it's just like anything else. Uh, if we're speaking in the same terms, uh, Governor Christie and uh, turning that department to the sheriff's department and taking over that whole uh, area of policing. One of the things that happens is everything is being uh, put together uh, for privatizing. That's the bottom line. They're trying to privatize everything. Um, and if, if the people don't set at the table, and I'm sure you're familiar with Newark Police Department being taken over by the Department of Justice. So all these things are happening because there's a big uh, uh, understanding of people wanting to come back to these cities mm -hmm. to be able to have living conditions. And of course, the first thing they want to point to is the police department. That's interesting. Uh, what can we do to try to combat, in, in your opinion, what can we do to try to combat the killings that are going on in the urban cities, the larger urban cities? Well, I think um, I have uh, uh, three, uh, I have four sons and, and uh, two daughters, but uh, three of them happen to live in Charlotte. And I've been frequently going to Charlotte since 89. Um, and, and again, it goes back to being able to look at these cities and make sure that they're safe for everybody. 
And if, in my opinion, if the churches don't come together, if uh, the people that have that are stakeholders that have been in this city, that's why this is so beautiful because Donald Tucker, who started this 30 years ago, they've continued to talk about the issues. And that's why it's called Black Issues. Mm -hmm. And um, it should be Black Issues Community. And because if we don't have those people that are stakeholders to come to this kind of setting and talk about some of the issues, but more than that, begin to uh, gravitate and galvanize themselves to look at what are, we, what are we doing here at this time, in this juncture of everything that's being perpetuated. Sure. Now, we, we, we've talked about black lives. Can we talk about education? What do you feel uh, is happening with the educational system, being that a lot of our large urban cities have been taken over by, uh, by the state? Um, again, um, you know, from living in Newark for over 25 years, I saw some of the uh, areas in which uh, the communities, East Side, or East Ward, South Ward, West Ward, and Central Ward. And part of what has happened is we've had so many people that are superintendents, are people that came into the city, uh, really didn't have a vested interest. And when I say that, uh, one of the things that needs to happen, if you're uh, involved in the educational system, you should have to live in North New Jersey. You should not, or the cities that you service, you should not be coming from other areas and uh, penetrating the economic value of our kids and our system uh, uh, that has been taken advantage of it off of so many years. And now it's, it's sort of like a back and forth. Now they want to come back. What is the uh, benefits of having residents from the area? Uh, because you have a more uh, sensitized understanding of uh, Newark is probably one of the richest cities in, in the country. There's no reason why we shouldn't have better schools. There's no, re no reason why we shouldn't have better teachers. Now they're moving in that direction, but that's been something that has been going on for the past 30 years. And we have to now begin to say, we are gonna take a stand for our communities, for our children, and we're not gonna allow people to come in, make the dollars, take them out of the dollars, out of the cities, and then leave us like we are right now. Thank you. Please follow up with the new publication. I love this publication. How long has it been around? It's been 22 years. Oh, not new at all, just new to me. Anointed News Journal. Journal, I'm sorry. That's quite all right. Enjoy the reading. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. <laughs> and whenever you, we, we just need to sit down.